Okay, now we're in business. So today we're going to be learning about properties. Yes, ma'am? Oh, no. Today we're going to be learning about properties, and we're going to be able to apply the properties of operations and generate equivalent expressions. I can put a hole, a different hole in it for you if you'd like. Yeah, we can figure something out. Using the properties. Here. Hmm? Oh. So using properties of operations to generate equivalent expressions. So you're writing what's in red over there. Right there with kids. 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 Yeah. Children. Niños pequeños. You're going to be able to apply the properties of operations to de generate equivalent expressions. So you're just writing what's read. And DJ, if you want to s not be turned around the whole way, you can sit next to Mr. Leedy or across from uh, Sean. You're just writing what's in red. I see people writing a lot. You're just writing what's in red. So we already did the completing the who's related worksheet. Um, and the idea is I'm going to show you guys how to do the different properties that are involved in mathematics. So for the first one, actually, we need to get your notes page slow. <clears throat> for the first one, it says here commutative property. So the commutative property talks about the order that things are in that it matters or if it doesn't matter. So it says here. Our class is a community, commutative. No matter how we arrange ourselves, we are all still part of the class, right? Even though right now we're not in our oh, normal classroom, 003, it's still us, right? It's still the group. We're in a different seating arrangement because my seventh graders are doing group work today, so we're in pods. But it's still us, right? We all know who we are. Okay? Yeah. So it's still, we're still the same community. We're just in a different order. So. The change in order, community property of addition, 8 plus 3, Quinn, 8 plus 3 and is equal to 3 plus 8. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. What is 8 plus 3? 11. 11. <laughs> and what's 3 plus 8? 11. 11. It doesn't matter what order they're in. It's still the same. Then we have A plus B is equal to B plus A, and that's just putting it as an expression so you can have it apply to everything. Okay. Then there's a change in order. Again, the commutative property of multiplication. That's 5 times 7, which is 30, 35. And 7 times 5 is 35. You guys know how in the, uh, the old multiplication tables where the two things lined up? Okay, that's, that was kind of like the, the commutative property. It went, whether it went down first or to the left first, it's all the same. That's commutative property. Sally. Collected aluminum for two days. On Friday morning, she collected 20 cans, and on Friday night, she collected 25 cans. On Saturday morning, Sally collected 25 cans, but on Saturday night, only collected 20. Did she collect more on Friday and Saturday? Let's work this out. Okay, whoa. So we have Saturday, sat. Okay. Let's go. No, we'll go Friday first. So we have Friday and we have Saturday. Saturday morning, then Saturday night. I almost put a K. Okay, Saturday night. How many did we get collected on Friday morning? What is it? 20. 20? Or Friday night, rather. Okay. How many did we collect on Saturday morning? Okay, we collected Saturday morning, Saturday so collected 25. Okay, on Saturday night, only collected 20. You know, it's just Friday night, she collected 25. Ah, there we go, good. Oops. Oh. Friday, 25. Saturday, morn. 
Is it? There's no Friday morning, is there? Yes. Oh, geez. See, I'm all up on it, so I can't read it. Friday night. Saturday morning. Saturday night. Okay. So we have. So we have. Uh, Friday morning, she collected 20. Friday night, she collected 25. Saturday morning, she collected 25. And Saturday night, she collected only 20. So that, those are the two different days. Did she collect more on Friday than Saturday? No. No. Because it's just the same thing. It's community property. Just one was in the morning, one was at night. On Friday, she collected more at night. Saturday, she collected more in the morning. Any questions about that? So then we have the associative property, grouping and parentheses. So it's associated together. Okay. Has that, have you ever heard the term? Um, like, let's say there's, mm, how do I say this? There you go. Yes, you cannot associate with other people. If you're associating with other people, what are you doing? You're talking. Yeah, you're associating. You're, you're talking. You're hanging. You're socializing. Good. So this one here, the associative property is grouping in parentheses. So our class is arranging groups, associative. So you guys are in, associated with three other people other than yourselves. Uh, we can arrange groups, but there you can still be part of the groups. You guys can go to different groups, but it's still the same. So for example, change in grouping. Associative property of addition. Now this is addition, so it doesn't matter what order it goes in. Okay? Because uh, with the order of operations, what would you do first here? For that, for the uh, for the one on the right. Let's talk about this one. For this one, what would you do first in order of operations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do the parentheses first, exactly. So, but it's addition, so it doesn't really matter which one it is. Okay, it really doesn't matter which one it is. But with the parentheses, we do that first. But those ones are being associated with addition. It doesn't matter what group they're in. You can put the parentheses in anyone. You guys remember last week? Eh. Yeah. Remember last week when we did that really tough part where we had to put the parentheses in somewhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one. I, that was pretty tough. That was pretty tough. I was going to put one of those on the quiz, but I decided not to. Eh. Change of grouping. Associative property of multiplication. Now this one, as long as it's all the same, that still works. Please stop touching her. Thank you. So this one, it tells us exactly what to do, but it says that 9 times 2 is 18, and then 18 times 6 is going to be the same as 12 times 9. So whether you're doing this first, or this first, it's going to be the same because it's all multiplication. That's the associative property of multiplication. That's not. Yes. So which one would you do? Would you just go from left to right? If you had two parentheses, you do the left parenthesis first. Yep. Yep. It's a lot of words, but you also have it on your on your paper if you can't read that. There is a prize for selling the most tickets to the school play. Alphonse, Bella, or Bela and Chalfon are the leaders. I don't know, maybe? I don't know. I don't speak French. Alphonse sold 42 in the first week, 59 in the second week, and 78 in the third week. Bella sold 59 in the first week, 78 in the second week, but, is all, but has a disappointing third week with only 42 sold. The first week, Chalfon sold 78. Second week, he sold 59. And the third week, he also sold 42. Who wins the prize? Yes. They all have the same? We'll go in order. So we have good old Al. We have Bell and Shall. So I'm going to organize my thoughts here. Week one, week two, week three. 
And all right, help me fill this out. Who? Um, someone tell me. Uh, let's go, Potter. Who did uh, Alphonse do, and how much did Alphonse sell in week one? Forty-two. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's too orange. Okay. How about week two, Bradley? Fifty-nine. Okay. How about week three, Avery? Seventy-eight. Okay, how about Bella for, yeah, week one? Speak up. Thank you. 59, good. Amo, how did uh, Bella do second week? Okay. Satrowski, Abby? 42, okay. So right now we're starting to recognize some things. DJ, how about Chalfon? 78 for week one. Okay, how about week two? 59, and I bet you can all guess what. 42. Yep, 42. Oh. Uh oh. Let's see, what is it? I, I, I. Oops. Oopsies. Forty-two. So right away, right away, you can tell that this are, they all sold the same, right? Okay. Is that community property or social property? It's a commutative because all it is is just they're all added together just in a different order. Okay. That's a commutative property. That's commutative property. They all got the same, so it's nobody wins. Okay. Nobody wins because everybody loses. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Looks like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was on accident. No, they're not. All right. So Darcy, Egmont, and Finian. Egg Eggman? I don't know. Yes, they are names that you may not have heard before. That's okay, though. Shh. Darcy's box is 12 inches long, 8 inches wide, and 5 inches high. Eggman's box is 8 inches wide, and it is a foot deep, and also is 5 inches high. Finian's box is only 5 inches wide, but is 8 inches wide. Hmm? I didn't catch that before. Um, okay, five inches long, five inches wide, and eight inches wide. Uh, it is the tallest box, a full 12 inches high. These are all the inside measurements. They are arguing about which will hold the most, which box has the largest volume. Now, this is, again, associative property, and they're just going to be mixing it around, right? Because if you have volume, Kobe, stop. They all have the same amount of dimensions, um, except for the one with the 12, right? Because we have, well, no, we all, they all have 12. So it's just saying the different dimensions of the exact same thing, and through the associative property. So we have, is it a full line? Yeah. So they're all having a different size box. Okay. So they all have a different size box. I'll do this. There. So they all have this different size box. But the thing is, all they're doing is just flipping the box in a different direction, and it's going to be the same exact box. OK, they're just considering one different size, the, type, the height. So they could just be, um, 
I guess I could go. So it's the same size box, it's just being flipped different ways. See the dimensions? Everything is 12 by 8 by 5. See that? 12 by 8 by 5. They're all 12 by 8 by 5. So one of them has 12 being the height. Then this one is 8, and then this side is 5, and then this side would be 5, this side would be 8, and this side would be 12, right? This side would be 12. Okay? All this, it's the same box. Okay? See so associative property. I'm not an artist, okay? No, I said it's social. I meant the commutative. I meant the commutative. Yes, ma'am. No, I cannot draw a kitten because there aren't kittens in this. Now we have the identity property. Yep, it's all the same volume. Volume, volume, volume. It's all the same volume. It's all the same volume. It's all the same volume. So the identity property is where you add zero, shh, you add zero to uh, to anything, and it's still going to be the same thing. So it's like, yeah, I have five dollars in my pocket, and you gave me zero dollars. Now I have five dollars. Yeah. I should invest in that identity property. Multiply by one. So the identity property of multiplication, or sorry, the addition, I, I left out a word there. So for this guy, we have the identity property of addition or additive property. So you're adding zero, it's nothing. Then we have multiply by one. The identity property of multiplication or multiplicative, multiplicative identity property is where you multiply anything by one, you have that same thing. Okay? You have that same thing if you multiply it by one. And that's that was we did that yesterday with when we had like the one a plus two equals a plus two. Remember how we said that that situation here one times a is the same as a. Yes, sir. If it yeah divided by one yes. Okay. What is the quantity that will make this statement true? So for the first one, what you got, Taylor? Zero. zero? Yes. So write zero. Is that does that look like you've that? Yeah. Oh, it's in there already. So yeah, it'd be zero. So this would be zero. Then we have twelve times what is twelve? Yeah. I oh, know. Actually, I've gotten you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Abby, I haven't heard from you much today. For the second one. One, exactly. What would happen if I put a zero in that blank? It'd be a zero. Exactly, because when you multiply anything times zero, it's zero. When you multiply anything times zero, it's going to be zero. Uh, how are we doing for, how about uh, the next one? What, what do we got to add to this one to make sure it's 10,001? Pada? Zero, because you got to add zero to that, and you're going to have the same thing. Then we have blank times 45 equals 45. What you got there, buddy? One, because it's the multi, it's the, it's the identity property of multiplication. You gotta multiply it by one. That's right. Yeah. A. Then this one is gonna be what, Avery? B. B. How about this? Um, well, actually, why don't we do? Okay, yeah, that is the same. Good. So the identity property, um, I want you to identify which property, correct property with the examples given, the identity property of addition, the associative property of multiplication, and the commutative property of, you, I want you to do 
Um, yeah, it's it's. If that was the answer, yeah. So you would see the blanks on the right in that box. I want you to put those in there. Do that now, please. Just for the, you know, why don't you do both of them? Go ahead and do both of them. Go ahead and do both of them. It's for whatever number one is. You put that. Look, here's one. Identity property of addition. Whatever one of these is identity property of addition, put that letter there. And be sure to verify what you're doing by looking at your notes. <clears throat> What does somebody have for the first one on this one here? Yeah. B, because it says the identity property of addition. Exactly. Identity property of addition, that should be that should be B. Rebecca, what do you have for the second one? Okay, we'll do it now then. Okay, you have A for the associative property of uh, Associative property of multiplication, I'm going to disagree with you on that because we say, it says multiplication here. And is there any multiplication when you said A? Did you do the one below it? Yeah. Ah, OK. So um, Amal, what do you got? You got C. So the associative property of multiplication, yes. So that would only leave A for that guy. Now we have a decent one. Identity property of multiplication. What do you have there, Abby? B for the first one. So identity property of multiplication. I'm going to disagree with you. Did you do the one before it? OK, C. Good. That just looks like a what? A G? Is that better? OK, how about the second one? Yeah. We have A, as Rebecca helped us and then Audrey got us, we have A for the associative property. These guys are associating together. OK, so it's A. OK, then we have one more, which is B, community property of multiplication. And that's just showing any order that you want. So that one's going to be B. Okay, and we're calling a cab. So here's what I want you to do. Use an example and explain why grouping numbers in different ways does not change the result. Shh. Does not change the result of addition or multiplication. Give justification and commutative rule of multiplication using an array model. And we'll talk about that. Explain the commutative property does not apply to subtraction or division. So we've done the lesson. I want you guys to sum it up. And we will, oops. Yeah, yeah.